you guys are more inundated with ads a lot more than when I was your age. Um, if you think about it, uh, the internet has not been around for really that long. I know it was before you were born, uh, but when I was in middle school, the internet did not exist. Okay, email was just coming about in the early 1990s. Uh, the World Wide Web, as we know it, came about in about the mid-90s. I was like high school, college age. Um, so you guys play a game on your iPad, and you get to a certain point, especially if it's a free game, and an ad pops up, and you have to sit through 30 seconds of something, right? Uh, or you're watching a YouTube video, and you really want to watch that video, but an ad pops up at the beginning of it, and you're like, come on, I just want to see this one thing. Uh, sometimes you get to skip it, sometimes not. The people that put those videos on YouTube, the original video that you want to see, choose whether to put an ad at the beginning of their video or not. And that's how people get paid uh, on YouTube. Uh, like PewDiePie, if you watch his channel, uh, there's an advertisement a lot of times before his videos that play um, so that he gets money for you watching those. Um, so that's one aspect. The other thing is, uh, who here has ever really, really wanted a toy and like nagged their parents for something? And then you got it, but then you didn't really play with it. Anybody have that <laughs> experience ever? So a lot of you have, right? Uh, you, the wanting of it is more than the actual having of it. So that's kind of a needs, uh, you know, necessity thing versus a want. Um, at some point, you have the choice of buying things yourself. You'll have a job. You get to choose what to buy. Um, and a lot of the marketing comes into that. So uh, keeping on the McDonald's theme for a little bit, uh, who is the mascot of McDonald's? Yes. Ronald McDonald. So in the past 10 years, I would say that there's been a fear of clowns more than I've ever seen. Does anybody have a fear of clowns in here? Okay, a couple of you actually, four, five, six of you actually do. So the name of that is cholerophobia. That is the fear of clowns. So I'm going to show you Ronald McDonald, as you might know him. If you are a little frightened, you can look away. Uh, but this is supposed to be a friendly clown, right? So there might be uh, movies that influence you in how you think about clowns, uh, but this is supposed to be, you know, happy, fun, I'm going to sell you a hamburger type of clown. Okay, this is the Ronald McDonald that most people know. The original Ronald McDonald is so much scarier, okay? Uh, I have a picture of him, and if you are frightened, feel free to react. <laughs> A little scarier or a lot scarier? He looks more friendly. He looks more friendly? Yes. Uh, so the actor of uh, the original Ronald McDonald was Willard Scott. You might know him. You might not know him. He's the, the Today Show uh, kind of weatherman. And he like, gives old people birthdays if they're over 100. Um, so that's him as a younger actor. Um, but I think, I don't know, I would not buy a hamburger from that person. <laughs> okay, no more clowns in the whole the rest of this. All right. uh, so, when you're your age or a little bit younger and you wanted to, let's say you wanted to go to McDonald's and eat a meal, what kind of meal would you really, really want? Happy meal. Happy meal. Why would you want a happy meal over anything, any other choices? Let's go right here. Um, because of the toy. Because of the toy. Okay, so that's marketing. So there may be a new movie coming out. Let's say that a new Transformers movie is coming out, and uh, the company that owns Transformers, I don't know if it's Hasbro or Mattel, will tie in with a food company some of their products so that you as consumers go, oh, yeah, I want that because I want to see this movie eventually. So I'm going to have that as a toy, and then I'll go see the movie, and then my life will be complete. Uh, yes, comment on that. Two things. One, there's another Transformers movie coming out. That's terrible. Uh, <laughs> and two, the last one was not good. And the second thing is, I noticed that whenever adults get to buy something for themselves, like just for the fun of it, they get way too excited, like much more so. excited than a kid. So I thought that <laughs> adults would be more prone to buy things from commercials. Interesting. Or buy things for themselves. For themselves. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've only been to McDonald's like three times in my whole life, but. The only reason I bought Happy Meals was to have those fries because I always got more French fries than Happy Meals. Oh, you get more fries in the Happy Meal yeah. than just ordering like a small fry? Yeah. Interesting. They give you like healthier. But now you have the choice of like apples, right? Instead, they yeah, give you like somewhat healthier choices, which is a better 
better movement. Okay, uh, so marketing. What this does is it creates this thing called brand loyalty, which is a very strange thing to think about. So you, as consumers, as human beings, like certain things more than others. Some of you might like Pepsi more than Coke. Some of you might like the brand Under Armour clothing more than Nike. Uh, some of you might like PlayStation over Xbox. That's not, there aren't like really, sometimes there are good reasons, but sometimes it just comes down to a preference or a taste. Uh, or it's you've been conditioned to from it. A certain athlete wears a certain clothing, so I have to wear that too. Or somebody eats something that I see, a celebrity's holding something, oh, I want to have that as well. They shop here, they have a clothing brand here, I'm going to buy that as well. So you guys take on this stuff. And as consumers, everybody does this. You don't have to feel like guilty over it, but it's nice to acknowledge it. Um, because not everybody does. And they just are like, yay, money, and I'm going to buy everything. And if you don't have all that money, then you become in debt, which is not a good thing. With all of this said, your project is going to push you to market things specifically towards one group. And that group is young children. Okay? Your goal is to market your product, which is an illustration and a graphic design project, towards children. Okay? I'm going to show you uh, some pictures of a character. Don't say anything verbally, but I want you to raise your hand if you know the name of the person and the product they're selling. Okay, we'll start with this one. That's uh, more than half of you. Okay, who is the name of this person? Say it. Frosted Tony. Tony the Tiger, and he's oh. selling what? Frosted And his catchphrase is? They're great. They're great. Okay? You guys know that one. Good. Um, color scheme-wise, we're noticing complementary colors. Do you notice the complementary colors in this yes. picture? What are the complementary colors? Orange and blue. Orange and blue. Good. Say That's done on purpose. Okay? That blue background is chosen on purpose. So we have Frosted Flakes, and inside this box has an actual uh, Matchbox car, Hot Wheels car, which is kind of cool. Sometimes you have to mail away for that stuff. Uh, an older version of this same cereal, this is from like the 60s, 70s. Um, a little bit more kind of children's booky looking uh, of an illustration. They, we don't, didn't have gra um, digital graphic design back then, so everything was hand drawn, so it has more of that look than the colors and fa shading on this one. Yeah? How come he has like, that thing with his name on it? Uh, that's just his thing to make him probably more friendly and not just a regular tiger. His little it's just, it's just, bandana. It's just like um, binky, not binky thing, but like the, a bib. A bib, yeah. a bib. okay, maybe it's a bib. Yeah? It makes him look more like a person and not like a wild animal. Ah, you. good. So personifying uh, the animal to give it human characteristics. Yeah. Um, the old one actually looks healthier. Healthier? Yeah. yeah. So, like the green so green, a lot of times in food industry, signifies that it's a healthier option or it's more natural. So you'll see that um, in advertising. Oh, I should also say, I forgot to mention this to another class. When you're in the supermarket and you're in the cereal aisle, where is the kid's cereal located? Have you guys noticed? Left. Not on the left. Where is it located? Like on the sides. Not on the sides. On the bottom. On the bottom. Why is it on the bottom? Oh, because kids are shorter than adults, right? So kids see cereal at a certain level, a certain height, and they're attracted to that. Adult cereal is all up in the top two shelves, I would say. So next time you're in the supermarket, see if you can notice that. All right, I'm going to show you another mascot. Raise your hand if you know who it is and the product they're selling. Don't say it out loud. Some of you might not know the name exactly, but... Okay, this cereal is what? Say it. Tricks. Tricks. And this is who? Bugs Bunny. Silly Rabbit. Tricks Rabbit. Bugs Bunny. Silly Rabbit. What's the catchphrase? Doug. Red Silly Rabbit. Tricks Tricks Rabbit. Rabbit. That's it. You got it. Okay, Nestle cereal. <laughs> All right, let's try another one. If you know the name of the mascot and what they're selling, raise your hand. Might not know the name, not as many of you. Okay, the cereal is what? And the mascot is who? Toucan what? Tan. Toucan Steve. Toucan Sam. That's what I said. 
class. That was French, right? And who knows the catchphrase? Uh, what is it? Um, These are mine. What? No. <laughs> what is the catchphrase? Follow your nose to the fruity taste it shows or something like that. So if we're looking at the name of the cereal, do you know that one of those words is misspelled? Fruit is not spelled with two O's. Okay, why is fruit spelled with two O's here? What do you think? Because they're using the fruit list as letters. Exactly. They're using the actual cereal itself, the product itself, in the title. Okay, that's a very smart thing to do. Yeah. I found a lie on that. It's What's multi grain cereal. Why is that a lie? Because <laughs> it's sugary and it's not healthy. Well, sugar is a sweetener, multi grain is the. Primary ingredient. They, they all, so, grains or oats or wheat or natural flavors. Definitely. What else? It said natural flavors and colors, but they actually use an artificial dye to get them to the color. That's a good point. They use bugs as the dye. Yes. Another thing. If they didn't use the the cereal as the the words, then I don't think it would be white. I think they did that to make it more colorful. You're right. But not too colorful. Right. Yes. Yes, it does say limited edition. More people want to buy it when it says limited edition. Even though this looks exactly the same to every other Fruit Loops box. So many lives. Limited edition. Uh, the other thing I will mention about this is that um, the milk and cereal advertising is never milk. It is usually Elmer's glue or some kind of paste like that because it won't... Uh, make the cereal too soggy, it'll look exactly the same so they can kind of place them in. The splash thing, I don't know how they do that, but um, some digital, yeah, manipulation. Two cancel so no, I he has arms. Maybe. Okay, one more mascot here. If you know who it is and what they're selling, raise your hand. And if you know the catchphrase, raise both hands. Uh, don't say it out loud. <laughs> so many hands up. Okay, the product they're selling is what? The name of the person is who? Charlie. Leprechaun dude. Charlie. Leprechaun Steve. Lucky. Lucky the leprechaun. <laughs> now, I see some repulsion about the old Lucky here. Okay. Uh, who's Irish here? Does anybody's no grandfather look like this guy? I'm 75% Irish. No. <laughs> Just curious. Just um, curious. You guys know Elizabeth Starr Peterson? Yeah. So she went home over the weekend, and she sent me this at the bottom of uh, Lucky Charms box. Had, interestingly enough, the variations of Lucky throughout the year. So 1972, 84, that's when I was a kid. Uh, 2003, this is like current. And then when they added the marshmallows and which one? So eight, 1991, the green tree was added. 92, the rainbow. 94, the pot of gold. I don't know if they all have all of those still, uh, but it's interesting. She she wanted to share that. Um, so just a couple more ideas about this before I get into the project. Um, you're noticing names of cereal. You're noticing mascots selling cereal. You see that they're for kids because they have bright colors, or they have the mascot, or they have some zany catchphrase. Um, sometimes there's kids involved in the commercials. Sometimes they steal the cereal away from the mascot, which is the Trix Rabbit, right? He never gets it. Uh, so we have Rice Krispies here. Snap, Crackle, and Pop is the sound effects of the cereal, but also the names of these three characters, if you didn't know that. Those are their names on there. 